Hey, good morning. There we are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. And it is, what day is today? Today's the third, isn't it? Right? It's the third? Yes. Today is May 3rd, 2019. It's been so long since I've done this. Uh, welcome back. And we're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going there, chat room? It's so good to see a bunch of you here. Wheel wheelchair Sean is here. Hello. Cron Chris. Uh, m evening for you? Okay. That's fine. Uh, Hugo, hello, and Carrie, good to see you. Gosh, um, anyone know a good C sharp tutorial start to finish? Start to finish, not sure, and that's something that that we should work on at some point here. Hello, uh, is it Ellen Nitro seventeen? Good to see you. Thanks for joining us, Alan. Mike Eaton is here. Good morning, Mike. It's so great to see you. Woo! Yeah, a little woo for Michael. There you go. Tobo Nautilus, it's afternoon for you. And Matthew, great to see you. Good morning. Um, my Philadelphia Fusion got walloped last night by the San Francisco Shock. San Francisco is gone now. I think it's 24 matches without losing a map. Jurgen, thanks so much for the resub. I really appreciate that. And we'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code. Thank you very much for that. Um... Yeah, we got walloped last night. It was not pretty. I was, uh, uh, I was shocked. We had a couple of really good leads, and, and the team just fell apart. So did the Blue Jackets. And you're right, they were playing the Bruins. I, why did I think they were playing the, uh, the Islanders? I don't know. Good to see you there, Error and Motown Andy. Thanks so much for joining us. So, um, let's head over to well let, hang on let's get some music playing in the background before we get any further into this i'm gonna play orange for uh for my boys my fallen dearly departed philadelphia fusion um of course this is music to code by from our friend mr carl franklin it's been scientifically engineer engineered it's been designed to get you in the groove to get you focused on whatever task it is that you might be working on whether it's code homework lawn work chores around the house, whatever, you're going to get focused listening to this music. Each song is about 25 minutes long. It's about the length of a Pomodoro. If you're not familiar with the Pomodoro technique, you take 25 minutes, focus on something exclusively, and then step away for five minutes, and then get right back into it. So when the song's done, your job is done. Step away, take care of something else, and then come on back and listen to the next song for another 25 minutes. You can get this at mtcb.pwop.com. You can drop an exclamation point music, just like Carrie did, right there in the chat room. And you'll get a link so you can buy the songs, or you can download them from musictoflowby.com. The first couple songs are free online. Check them out. We really enjoy them here on the stream. Thank you, Carl, for letting us listen to your music while we code. Okay, I think that's it. Hey, Chef Brent, good to see you. I do need a G Fuel command. I've got the G Fuel all loaded up. There we go. Today I've got, which one is it? This is, this is Blue Ice. I, I nearly called it Blue, Blue Raspberry or something. Why are you focusing, camera? Who told you to focus? Um, so I'm experimenting with using a GoPro to stream with. And we'll see how that works. This is a Razer Kio. Um, I'm told the GoPro is much better at with the uh, uh, with the camera, the resolution, the picture is just significantly better. So we're looking at that. Um, and yeah, I'm wearing my Overwatch hat today because because the the uh, fifth week of the second stage is almost done here, and it's going to be crazy. Google Sheets, yes. That's your YouTube niche? Oh my gosh. Then we'll have a little bit of fun with this today. Um, so let me get that a little bit louder. And I think I do need a hat command that talks about which hat I'm wearing and why I'm wearing it. That's not a bad idea either. Hey, Space Cat. Good to see you. Oh my. There she is. That's Space Cat right there. Um, so let me see. Let's get, let's get over to here. We've changed up our goal. We're now going to try to raise... 8,000 followers before September 15th. If we get to 8,000 before September 15th, I will dye the beard rainbow for TwitchCon in September. I hope to see a lot of you at TwitchCon, especially the folks on the Live Coders team. If you're a Live Coder, we're uh, we're going to have some fun things for you at TwitchCon. Svava! Do it! 
right. We're going to do lots of mischief. What do you see? What do you see? This is going to be interesting today. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to do some fun stuff. TwitchCon. Oh, yes. All the mischief all the time. Lots of it. 1.2 million views for Google Sheets and Python. That is insane. That's insane. Um, Michael Jolly continuing the gift sub from Ancient Coder. Thank you, Michael Jolly. That is phenomenal. Thank you for that. I don't know why it didn't pop up here. We should have seen that show up. Just did some PHP and Python and C Sharp coming soon. Neat. So, let's uh, let's talk about this. Hey, there's a Hoefling. Good to see you. Wow. Uh, gosh, look. It is everybody popping in right now. How's it going there? I am not myself. So, this next piece that we're working on is going to be on a Mac. We're going to continue this, and we're going to work with Google Sheets today. Now, if you saw a little bit of what we were working on last night, you know that I had some problems using .NET Core with Visual Studio Code on the Mac. And somebody right at the end of stream said, oh, you need to install so-and-so in order to get that working on the Mac. So here I am on the Mac. This is my Macintosh right here that you see over my shoulder. And I did a little bit of digging. I went and found... Um, Rich Lander's blog post here about .NET Core 3 Preview 3. And if you scroll down a little bit here, um, there's a thing here about you must enable previews of the .NET Core SDK to use it with Visual Studio 2019. Of course, I should have known. I should have suspected. You need to install a preview version of the C Sharp extension in order to get it to you to work with Visual Studio Code. So let's do that real quick. I need to download the extension and then install it as a V6 in VS Code. So let's take care of that right now. I'm going to click through here. Um, there's the pre-release, blah, blah, blah. Updated Roslyn to match Visual Studio 16 Preview 4. Added support for reading C Sharp 8 nullable context options from the C Sharp files. So uh, let's click through and download this Chalupa. Yes, save that file. Save it. Um, oh, come on, Cron Chris. Yeah, we're on a Mac. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to get to some Auth0 here very soon because the bot that we're creating, we want folks to be able to log into. And the initial the initial chatter that I am not myself, it sounds so weird to say your name and back and forth, and I have been talking about is, hey, here's a place where we can drop in a little Auth0 for the bot, and that's where you'll be logging in. Uh, good afternoon, Rambling Geek. Good to see you. So that's one idea. And then Robert Tables, we were talking about, well, here's, here's an opportunity to put this into containers and do a little orchestration. So this is downloaded. It is sitting, where is it at? There it is. Now I need to install that into, um, into what's it called? Into uh, Visual Studio Code. So the way you install that into Visual Studio Code, let's see what it actually says here for instructions make sure uh, install from a v6 you can install v v6 using the vs code install extension command line switch uh, use install from v6 command on the extensions view command drop down or the extensions install from v6 command in the command palette I like that one better and then browse and go find it and install it let's do that I like that better all right, so let's go over here so we can see a little bit better. Look at the positivity. Our sentiment is back. I feel good about that now. I feel so much better. All right, so let's go back over to Visual Studio Code. Let's open the command palette. That's not the command palette. Isn't it this one? Or is it that one? There it is. Um, so I want to install extension from V6. There we go. Let me browse for it. It's over here in Downloads. There it is. Uh, please reload Visual Studio Code to complete installing the extension. Yes, please do that. Do that now. Where's my sound effect? I've got a sound effect for that. That's not going to work. Oh my goodness. Reinstalling OmniSharp. Good, good, good. We'd want the latest version. That stinks. Why is my 
microphone coming through. How about, How about now? now? Ah, ah, there, there we, we go. go. Do, Do it. it. You know what I mean? There, let's do it that way. Yeah, that's better. All right. Downloading .NET Core Debugger. Yes. There we go. Latest version of everything. That makes me feel good. Um, now, why didn't it reload and give me the latest? Uh, don't save. So we were working over here in some of these. So new subscriber. Yeah, there we go. That's all updated and got the latest stuff. The Michael Jolly is our sunshine. <laughs> Hype for the Mac, absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, Michael Jolly with the singing. Uncle Bill Druin, good to see you. Hello, hello. Uh, yes, Vets Who Code, absolutely. We want to support our our folks that. Oh my gosh, we want to support our folks that that come back uh, veterans and want to change up their career a little bit. Thank you so much, Mike Eaton, with the five gift subs. Hello. Um, Fochon, Stacking, Cryptocoder, Will Airways, Zealous123, congratulations. You just got a gift sub from Mike Eaton. And Kasukin, thanks so much for the resub. Oh my gosh, the sub train is hot. Thank you very, very much for that. And we'll support, make a donation to Veterans Who Code. Absolutely. Check out the hype from Mike Eaton, without question. And also, there is a thing still going on that Twitch is running where if you um, if you cheer with the bleeding heart cheer, you'll get uh, an additional, I think it's 10% of uh, bits will be added in there. Two Wolf, thanks so much for the resub two months there. Uh, how late am I going today? I'll go till about noon. I have a, I have a meeting at noon. So um, I guess I have a hard stop, don't I? So... Um, all right, so that is downloading language rate downloading the Razor language server. Finished. Good. All right. Some projects have had trouble loading blah 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 blah. blah. Now let's see if we get the uh, code completion. Required assets to build and yes, uh yes, add them please. Do that. Yep, lots and lots of red, but unresolved dependencies. Yes, fine, do that. They should all be here because it builds properly over in the other thing. Right? I'm not sure why we're getting all this red. I mean, it's good. It's actually detecting and doing the things. But... No! Please execute the restore. Well, okay. I thought we just did that. Okay, we'll do that again. I'm sensing a pattern. Hey, Welsh Ronaldo, good to see you. The 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 Soviets invaded? No. I'm not quite sure what it's doing here. I think I I'm not quite sure it's doing what I think it thinks it's doing. What would you say you're doing here? You done? Any more? I think it, it looks like it's stopped. So let's see if I type, do I get code completion? Now I do, okay. All right, that makes me feel a little better. All of this red over here, you got a lot of red in your books there. Um, that's scary. Why am I getting all that red? What's it red on, right? Uh, the type enum is defined in an assembly that is not referenced. I don't need to reference that. Let's reload the uh, user interface here. 
because that feels weird, right? Technology is hard. Hey, Clark IO is here. Hello, hello. Good morning. The Simeon says, I gave up developing on Linux due to a similar situation in Visual Studio Code and preview .NET Core builds. I get when you're in a preview version of .NET Core, some things are going to be a little, a preview version of any tool. Some things, right, your mileage may vary. But I, there we go. That looks a lot better. Uh, or I thought it did. No, go away. Shoo. I, I, that feels like a false positive that pops up because every time we look at the output, there's nothing there. Uh, it's great in Visual Studio Community and Windows. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Source Scoot, hello. Good to see you. Um, I try running the command straight from the CLI. Great point. I have, where is it? There's my command prompt. I actually have it running the tests live using .NET Watch here on, the, on this side of my Tmux. So, yeah. There, there's a tooling disconnect here, I feel. What's the smiley arrow icon under my name? 95.3. Now it's 85.8. I'll let one of the mods explain. It's so cool. It's sentiment analysis. It's amazing. It's telling me what it's like here in the chat room, how much fun people are having. So we're continuing to work on our project here for our friend Quiltoni, where we're building, that's where it initially started. We're building this distributed chat bot that's going to do all kinds of really cool things for us. Um, why is it still telling me this? I thought we cleared this out. Maybe because we didn't promote it to master. It's gotta be that. Um, so rainbows and unicorns. See, look at that. The happier you are, the higher that number goes. Happy, happy thoughts. Glitter. No, no, glitter's not fun. I thought I saw JAF1021 wander in here. Good morning. Good to see you. Tacos. No, tacos aren't, aren't a happy thing. <laughs> Is this like the emotion robot Kendra showed in the 2019 preview? Uh, very much. It's the exact same technology. Um, so we've been building this distributed chatbot. We've been using the actor model with Akka.net. We've been slowly moving things from... Let's change over to the other branch. The branch that we're actually working in. Uh, we've been moving things from the uh, single-threaded, single-process pixel bot project into this pixel bot orchestrator it's eventually going to be our command uh, service that will actually deploy and manage all the various actors that are interacting with the uh, the various chat rooms and we have actors that manage different channels and we have actors for a channel that manage the different events that happen in the chat room during the channel and we're slowly adding all of these features it's amazing it's terrific. D.D. Walsh. Wait a sec. Wait. It's like 7.30 in the morning. Our friend D.D. has a little bit of a sweet tooth here, it looks like. Having a Choco Taco at 7 in the morning? And you blow it! Really? Oh my gosh. I could never do that. Of course it was delicious. It's also full of gluten. With a diet. Oh my gosh. I just think of a Choco Taco and I gain two inches on my waist. Brandon Satrum, thanks so much for the resub. And Stream Elements didn't read it. Had a chocolate pizza in Vegas at 3 a.m. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Wow. It does. It does. Um, you had jelly beans. Okay. It, chocolate on a pizza is... is that's more of a violation than pineapple on a pizza, okay? What enters the colon stays in the colon. <laughs> Donuts, yeah, okay. Donuts are a thing. Anyways, so we're slowly moving features back and forth. Now, the feature that's most important that we continue to manage for for our friend Quiltoni is that the, the faux currency that this bot was originally set up to manage lives inside of a Google spreadsheet. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, you pick the right time to drop in, apparently? Yes, because we're talking about sugar. Tons of sugar. 
Sentiment analyze the <laughs> <laughs> okay okay well done <laughs> that's that's a thing but um that much sugar that much sugar it's illegal in nine countries is illegal in nine countries i you don't don't do that it's terrible you shouldn't be having that much much sugar in the morning you can do it no you can't you can't do that my, if my kids heard this, they would flip, okay? I mean, if you were to tell kids that they could have this much sugar in the morning... Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey! Think with fly. Think. They're gonna want all kinds of crazy things. It's gonna be insane. Alright, so we started putting together the various actors that are gonna interact with the currency. Things like... Um, we have a business rule from Quiltoni that says, well, when there's a new subscriber, we're going to award a certain number of in, uh, of currency, a certain amount of currency. In her channel, the currency is called pixels. So we're going to award different values based on what level you subscribe at. And then we're going to reach out to our currency repository, whatever that might be. See, look at that. I can't find it. Um, right if I F12 on this. Yeah doesn't know where to find it. I'm going to have to actually walk through and do the thing to go find it. Uh, right. There, there we go. I uh, currency repository. So I defined an interface for the currency repository, how we interact with this. The currency repository, um, I want to have the chat service passed into it because that's how we're going to interact with and let folks know that yes, I successfully granted a certain number of these things. It, this is, in essence, the logger that you're going to be interacting with. So I want to make sure that there's a, a logger that's available so it can, it can log to the chat room when it's done things. We're going to add currency for chatters, for all of the chatters in a channel. We're going to add for just a specific user. Or we could find the n amount of currency for a user. And then... And then... We have the ability to get the total number of values from the sheet. Now, this is very spreadsheet, Google Sheet oriented, this definition of this method. And I'm going to end up renaming it. But for right now, I'm okay with it because, because naming's hard. One of your favorite clips ever? Yeah, it is. It's, it's a pretty good one. Totally forgot about that, and that was on Monday. Yeah. Um, di diabetes. Yummy. <laughs> Um, so yesterday morning I was at the local Microsoft office and I was hanging out on Discord with a couple of friends uh, with Svava and Fairy Wings and Ash Caveron and um, the Fairy Wings comes, comes into, the, into the, the chat room and says oh gosh I don't have any, any, any breakfast food here for breakfast I'll just have some toast or something you know and uh, Ash says, no, you will not have just toast for breakfast. You will have a proper breakfast. And while Fairy is not looking, goes on to Uber Eats and orders bag of donuts, bag of donut holes, breakfast sandwiches, and has them delivered to Fairy Wing's house. And it was diabetes to go. <laughs> it was terrific. Uncle Bill Druin, thanks so much for the host. So we were talking. It was hilarious. The, and then all of a sudden there's pictures of donuts coming into Discord from Fairy Wings for these... Uh, yeah, these... Uh, th this delivery that came through. So we're going to integrate with Google Sheets here so that we can turn our different interactions here into actually posting and updating a Google spreadsheet that that our friend Quiltoni manages out there on 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 the interwebs. Why not use a database of some sort? Great question, Rambling Geek. This is what was specified by Quiltoni. That and that's for her channel. That's fine. And but that's also why I define this as a repository because I don't want long term to continue supporting a Google spreadsheet. This is very much a channel specific channel specific specification channel specific 
specification. Wait, master. It might be dangerous. Working with a spreadsheet as a data repository is a little bit danger dangerous because it doesn't support those ACID transactions, right? We don't have them atomic. We can't contain them. We're, we're going to have the various issues around interacting with the spreadsheet with two users at the same time. You're not going to be able to control and have those great transactions that make relational databases great for this type of interaction. So one of the things that we do do, did I just say do do? Wow. Yeah, is that um, when we update the spreadsheet, I put an entry in a log spreadsheet that says this is the change that was made. Vic Mai, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, consequently, and you can see this here inside of the solution, I have a project now called Replay Log that will load up those log records. Here they are. And it's a CSV because the spreadsheet can save as CSV. And I can replay these back against the spreadsheet. Right, so I can take an older version of the spreadsheet, grab the log, and because the log says here's what changed, I can replay those. I can fast forward against what changed. So it ends up being very much event storage in that log. See that? See? I've been thinking. Wow. I know. I can do that. So that's what's that's what I'm doing to support her business choice. Like I said, longer term, we'll set up MongoDB, we'll set up Postgres, something else that'll do the storage and maintenance of these. I don't have a fart command. So yes, it very much will be user choice. Google Sheets can be easy to manage for quick and dirty. Yes. And in fact, instead of having a bot manage these, um, they would just tell their mods, hey, go update this record in the spreadsheet. Which, not bad, you know. For low tech, that works great. The fart command is worth it. I can appreciate that it might be worth it in, in other channels. I'm not sure we're gonna let that be a thing here. It's already bad enough that we have this command. Scott! Right? Did you know that there were so many fart apps in the Apple App Store they finally stopped accepting them? Okay, that's, DD, that's, that's a little crazy. Right, we also have, I believe attention is still there. Yeah. So, um, we'll we'll add some sound effects, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure body sound effects are going to be something we'll carry over. But there's definitely there's definitely a need to put stuff like Do it live! that in there, certainly, and maybe and then, or and then and then and then we might do some of those squirrel. Yeah. So let's talk about implementing the Google Spreadsheet API here. So we have everything broken out and it's sitting, um, the API itself, the, the interface sits in, where is it? Here it is, in a data folder here. There it is, right? There's the interface we were talking about. But for making this available across what could be both our orchestrator and worker threads, worker processes that are hanging out there that, that start up as secondary processes. I don't want to use the term slave. That's, that, that could, it, it's, it's a little derogatory to use that term around technology. So I don't want to use that. And that's, that's going to be the last time you hear me refer to it here. But the secondary processes that are controlled by that orchestrator, I want to make sure that those have access to it as well. So I'm tempted to put my Google Worksheet interactions into a little DLL, a little project that just knows how to interact with the Google Sheets. Um, you'd like the end then sound effects. Yeah, I think that's something we could do. Do I have a one store to get all my clips or do you search online until... Uh, you can click the clips thing up above here, up above the video and you'll see it. Need to create something that increments a counter on your throat punch list for Fritz every time he uses the end then thing. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then. That's five more. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then. Okay, make that ten. Anyways, moving on. 
I, I did a bad thing. Your favorite sound, the end. Then I've 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 gotten a little carried away with it. Right. At times. Um, hey, at least I'm not writing JavaScript today. Right? So, um, I'm going to add a project to the solution to handle the Google Sheet interactions. No, no, no. Nothing wrong with JavaScript. It's just a thing that um, I like to poke fun at. I enjoy it, and we're going to have fun with it. Absolutely. I have much respect to folks who write JavaScript. There's there, there's a lot that goes into writing it. There's a lot you have to keep up with. Um, but it's a little out of the ordinary for, for me to program JavaScript. You've got the giggles with the sound effects. Oh, you ain't heard nothing yet, okay? A nutless monkey can do your job. Come on! Easy. That's... My producer, Len Grossman, over there. Um, all right, so let's... It, it, there is a lot to keep up with. And like I said, much respect to the folks that are able to keep up with and, and, and do all the cool things there. So let's create a new project here. I'm going to use the .NET new command right here in the integrated Visual Studio Code terminal. Um, and this is going to be... Is it going to be a class library? It would be a class library. It's going to be .NET standard then. I'm just going to run .NET new directly uh, because I forget the name of that .NET standard template name. Is it, is it just, it's not, I don't want class lib, right? Because I'd like, is it .NET standard in here somewhere? I don't see it. Now I feel bad. Fine. .NET new class lib. I'll give it a dash O <clears throat> so that you know uh, so I can specify the folder that we're outputting to. And I'm going to call this pixelbot. Uh, pixelbot.google. And we'll put all of our Google interactions into this one project. Yeah. Cool. So it restored. Um, I need to add it to the solution. So isn't that .NET SLN, right? Yeah, there we go. Uh, .NET SLN add... Uh, Pixel bot dot Google, and then it should be the same name, right? Add it to the solution. Fantastic. All right. So now for our friends that are using Visual Studio for Mac or Visual Studio 2019 or 2017 or 2015, when they open the solution file, it'll have a reference now and load up that project file. So let's take a look at the project file. Um, it's got a class one CS in here. Um, why can't I delete? I, I just clicked delete. Why didn't you delete? Goodbye. I don't want you anymore. There we go. .NET Standard 2.0 is the only thing that it has here. We're going to start adding references to... Um, you're right. 2015 will not work with C Sharp 8, but I'm not using C Sharp 8. I'm using C Sharp 7.3. I don't want to use C Sharp 8 just because, <laughs> as you saw on Tuesday, um, it's still experimental. It's very experimental. And there's still features that are being built, corrected, and deployed. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna hold back on going to C sharp eight. We've got enough preview stuff that we're working with right now. I don't need to add another thing into the mix. Let's get just a little bit more unstable. No, that's a bad idea. Because uh, oh, uh, Catafest, thank you for the follow. We're gonna we're gonna do it this way because it can be done exactly how I want it. It can, Walter White. The only question is, are you the man to do it? Darn right I am. We're gonna get right to it. So I have that that Google reference going on already down here in the Pixelbot project. So I'm going to cheat. Go find that CS proj file. Yeah, I'm cheating. And we're gonna find there it is the Google API for interacting with sheets gonna copy this and where'd the other project go um, I want I'm not used to this keyboard so forgive me um, this is an item group right yeah item group and we'll, we'll do that right item group that's what I want where'd it go no now I've done it I'm not used to all the 
Hotkeys here on the Mac. Uh, it was over here, right? Yeah, item group. That's what I thought. All right, so we added that package reference. Save, and it should do the restore behind the scenes for me. Or not. Um, .NET restore. So we get all the Google stuff, all the Google things added to the project. Code Jenga, absolutely. Okay. It didn't report an error, so it must have restored properly. Um, there are two interactions that I have, two different ones, inside of the pixel bot that manage the interactions with uh, the Google spreadsheet right now. And we're going to want to in uh, we're going to want to improve them. There's Google Sheet Proxy and there's Dryad Google Sheet Proxy. Very much, this is, um, there's two different formats for the spreadsheets for the two for our two friends that are using the bot. So instead of, um, instead of putting a bunch of if-then statements inside of the one to pivot so it behaves properly for, for both Quiltoni and Dryad T, I just say we'll duplicate the class and we'll swap it in appropriately because I've already got an interface there for interacting with this. Funny thing is, C Sharp Fritz switches this month from Windows to Mac, says Tobo Nautilus. You just switched your Windows machine for the first time this year because you're a Mac user. Switched to a Windows machine. Oh, great that you could see some tools and services on both machines. Yes. Yeah, there's all kinds of great stuff that you can use. And, and what I want to show and what I want to encourage is use whatever tools make you happy. If you like a Mac, great. If you like Windows, that's cool too. Visual Studio for Code works great. When you saw Visual Studio for Mac yesterday, um, you just need to install the right versions of the tools for the right version of the project you're working on. So I'm going to grab this Google Sheet proxy, and I very much think we're going to end up copying this same thing because it already has a lot of the things to interact with with the Google. And um, we'll pass this we'll bring this over. There's a lot of logic here that we're going through just to juggle and dance around the spreadsheet. Um, not cool, Karan Chris. Um, take it easy there. Take it easy. We're, we're not going to put down anybody's choice of technology. If this works for them, that's fine. But we're, we're not going to insult anybody. We're not going to call any names here. So, um... Cross-platform tooling from Microsoft is fantastic. Parity is getting there. It is. Um, it definitely is. New container developing with Visual Studio Code Preview. Yep. Very cool stuff coming. So um, I'm going to copy this. Bring it up into... Where'd it go? There it is. Into the Pixelbot Google here. I'm going to paste a copy of it here. So now we have Google Sheet Proxy, and we're gonna I'm gonna change this up so that it's in Pixelbot.Google, um, and this is a yeah Google Sheet Proxy. It's not iSheet Proxy. We now need to add a reference over to um, what's the other project? The Core, right? Which is uh, Quiltoni Pixelbot Core, and we need to rename that too. I also want to get rid of these references to Twitchlib. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm worrying that OmniSharp hasn't run against this. I don't have any highlights. I don't have any red squiggly lines in here. Nothing that's, that's helping me out yet. And that feels weird. Right, as a Visual Studio developer, I'm looking at this going, where is it? Has anyone looked at the Bosque language? Uh, no, I have not. Hey there, Catafest. Welcome. What a time to be alive. The Fritzbot. What did the Fritzbot say? Yeah. All right. Nope, I haven't looked at Bosque. It's an experimental language, an experimental tool. Um, there's a lot of research folks at Microsoft that are always looking at better languages, better tools. So I need to add a project reference here. So I'm going to add another item group. 
I could put it in the same. Um, I could put it in the same item group as the package references, but it's kind of a good practice to put these next to each other so you have all of your NuGet package references inside of one project, one item group, and your project references in another, just to kind of keep them isolated and separated from each other. So, there we go. Um, I'm going to reference, I'm going to go up one and down into Quilt Tony pixelbot.core. And I need to actually grab right the project name there, Quiltoni, Pixelbot. And one day we'll go through and uh, we'll have we'll have some fun doing the rename of this and cleaning that up. But that's a bit of yak shaving that I don't really want to do here live uh, while we're working together. Uh, you're a little dizzy into ex explications. What do you mean? Um, there's a number of folks that are watching that are not developers or that are just starting their journey, their career in software development. So I want to make sure that I explain things so that it's clear exactly what it, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, also so folks in the chat room can chime in and say, oh, wait a sec, Jeff, that's a bad idea. You may want to consider this instead. Um, additionally, some folks like to listen and not necessarily watch. So if you're listening, I need to play a little bit of the radio broadcaster and explain why or what it is that I'm doing. So um, so if I .NET build here, it should pick up that reference and we should get a actually an error here because some of the things that are inside that proxy class uh, don't work. Yeah, I'm going to get a bit of errors there. Um, the config, yep, we need to make sure that that's available. Some of these things are not there, um, but it should have restored properly, right? Da, 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 right? Uh, type or namespace name, extensions. Yeah, yeah, some of these things don't exist over here. That's fine. So, nope. Pixelbot config is somewhere else. We're gonna change that up because we have a new configuration that we're using that's different. That's fine. Good. Uh, EA Johnson says plus one for listening in the background. There you go. Thank you. I, I didn't specify a project. Um, I should specify a project, but I don't. Half the benefit is explaining the thought process. Yes. And uh, additionally, right, I, I refer to folks that are in the chat room as pair programmers. If there's something that I'm doing wrong, tell me. Let's fix it. If there's something that you want to help with, Put together a pull request, send it over. I will absolutely give you credit for it and we'll put your name up top on on the ticker that you see going across there where we celebrate the folks that have contributed code to our projects. So I wanna make sure um, that we recognize and share things and, and Catafest, you know, I hope I hope that you see some benefit in that while we're while we're working together on, on code here on stream. It is the pair programming. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So I think I think that's the only reference. Well, let's leave it open. We might need to change some more things here. I don't need this. Let's clean up some of these other things here. Um, we will need that eventually. So if we look at the Google Sheet proxy that we started here. Yeah, look at this. Um, I feel like I need to reload the interface again because the um, the OmniSharp plugin for Visual Studio for Visual Studio Code that's supposed to be looking at the C-sharp code isn't giving me the indicators for the code that's broken and doesn't work. So um, let's see if we can pop that pop that thing back open. There we go. Let's reload the window again. See if I can get that to pop open here and, and actually start giving me that rich feedback in the editor here. Initializing the build project tools, doing the thing with the stuff. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. All right. Yeah, we're not going to get the syntax highlighting here, are we? And now I feel bad. All right, fine. We're going to do this my way then. 
So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to change into the Pixelbot Google project. And I'm going to put a .NET Watch build here. What .NET Watch build does is .NET Watch, that first verb, watch, says, hey, .NET, watch this project, and when things change in it, execute the next verb, in our case, build here. So as the files change, it's going to rebuild, and my goal is that nine errors that you see right here. I want to drive that to zero. And because I'm not getting rich feedback on a task list, the error list here that shows me, ooh, you have nine errors, I'm going to do this by hand and go through and look at these. So um, it doesn't know what Pixelbot config is. It doesn't know what iLogger is. It doesn't know what iChat service, iOptions are. So we're going to need to fix these. Look at that. 100% sentiment. Everybody's extremely happy in the chat room. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Everybody's happy doing the stuff. Perfect sentiment. Damn, now it's not. Okay, fine. We'll move on then. Uh, everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of... I need... There's... Well, I'm going to get nailed for copyright infringement if I did that. Do I really need iLogger here if I'm using the chat service to log things out? Maybe. Pixelbot config, I think we can definitely move around here. When we start this, taking iOptions... Well, first off, it doesn't know what iOptions are, right? Because iOptions comes out of... Uh, yeah, Microsoft Extensions Options. So we need to get that reference if we're going to pass in configuration to this. So... Yeah. Um, that configuration... iExtensions Options is in um i'm going to steal it from over here oh no i can't steal it from over here because this is web it's hiding that reference from me nuts okay so what we'll do is we will add the package reference here on the command line so I'm opening just another terminal. Um, <laughs> Pixel, bot, Google. Um, and I believe I can do .NET. Is it .NET add? Isn't that the command? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. .NET add package. And then I believe it's Microsoft extensions options. Come on. I'm feeling good about this already. I see the word okay a lot. And it makes me feel good. There we go. All right. So now if I... No, no. Go away, Mac toolbar. There we go. So now the appropriate package reference is added there. And that's a 2.2, which should be okay. Because this is .NET Standard 2.0. In case you don't... In case you, you aren't familiar with .NET Standard, .NET Standard is a contract... Right? I'm not actually building against a runtime here. I'm building against a contract that says this will work properly in all of the .NET frameworks that implement the .NET standard 2.0 contract. So that means Xamarin for iOS and Android, .NET Core, and .NET Framework on Windows implement .NET standard 2.0. And if I build for this, this will work in all of those different .NET runtimes. For this project, though, I'm only working in .NET Core. I don't want to code against or just .NET Core because at some point I might build a Xamarin application. So I want to make sure I do those things right. Yes! Catafest, that's exactly where I'm going. Thank you for the link. We're going to be going there in just a second. Um, look at that. Chef Brent's on a train. All right, cool. Um, so I've got that, uh, I've got that one added. So now if I go back over to the other terminal, I should see, because I made a change. There we go. Now I'm down to seven errors. What else am I missing? Logger factory. It doesn't know about Pixelbot config. That's going to change. I sheet proxy. Well, that's not my interface. We can change that. 
We changed the interface. It is an iSheet par proxy that we're using for this. We renamed it yesterday to iCurrency Repository so that it wasn't directly referencing or implying when we use this in our other code that we're using a spreadsheet because like I said in the future we're going to be using we're going to be using a, a database. You don't think that works with Xamarin? Um, I don't need to test it right now, but there's ways to make that work. There's ways. There's always ways. I'll be watching. No. Um, all right. iCurrency repository is in Quiltoni Pixelbot core data. So, see, I should get a thing here that says generate the using statement, but I'm not. So let's put that in here. Using Look at that. It, it knows what these things are. Pixelbot core uh, no core data. So now if I save that, we should see this terminal restart. Uh, I saved. I saved. There it goes. The build should start and I should see that go down to six errors, right? Or up to 10. Oh, you know what? It's because I didn't implement all the things. Does not implement interface member. Okay. That's fine. Because we renamed the methods. Um, da, 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 da. I renamed them for, at, for instead of add pixels for chatters to add for chatters. Down here, it's not add pixels for user, it's add for user. Where's the next one? That's fine. That's a private method. Private method. Da, da, da. I see all the private methods down here. I'm, I think I'm out of the public methods. Find. I think this is now find for user. So let's save and see if we can get that build number, error number down to seven. There is no way to do DI in Xamarin easy. No. You're right. Um, all right, back down to seven errors. What am I missing? What didn't I implement? Does not implement chat service. Okay, fine. Oh gosh, and it's not gonna let me do that. Okay, this iChat service is actually coming out of Coltoni Pixelbot Core. All right, so we gotta add that using statement here. Right, so if I have that, that should give me the reference to this iChat service, and it's not called Twitch, it's actually called Chat Service. I don't, gosh, I really, I really feel hamstrung that I don't have um, the the IntelliSense things helping me out here. All right, down to five. Much better. Yeah. Um, did you miss something at a meeting? Did I decide to not use the VS Code build commands? Um, so yeah, build is, why isn't it popping up there? Right? Um, I could yeah, run the build task. Sure. Right? But say, look, I'm kind of runs the build task and now what? It's not showing me any errors or any warnings here. So I'm 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 kind of hamstrung here. It's not showing me. So, there is the task JSON and launch JSON. Yes, there are. And I told it to generate those things. And it didn't actually put anything in here. Um, so, I'm... I'm at a loss why it's not doing that. This was something that was started and wasn't finished. I'm going to comment this, but I think we're going to end up getting into this at some point. Interactions with the Google Sheets. We're going to need to do that. Maybe try the control B command to auto generate them. Um, 
didn't do anything. Right? I mean, it, it... That happened, and it didn't generate anything here. Right? If I pop this open... Um, right? Configure default build task. It wants to do NPM. That's not what I want. Try again. Dot Nate, generate assets for build and debug. And it didn't do anything. So, yes, I have the C Sharp extension installed. You see it right here. It's already configured. So, it's not doing anything. So, yeah, right? I'm, oh, sure, go ahead, save. Right, I'm not getting any of that rich C-sharp interaction, even though I installed the C-sharp tools. Yeah, I thought it would do it too. Intelli IntelliSense does not work if the project is not added to the solution. I have it added to the solution. Check it out. Check it, check it out, check it out, check it out. Let's scroll down to the solution file. There it is. It's modified, but it hasn't been popped in yet, but uh, pixelbot.google, there it is. It's in the solution. Uh, no, go away. So it's there. Um, in fact, if we go to another file, da, 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 I'll go over here to startup. Foo. Foo isn't a thing. But I'm not getting the Intelli... I'm... I am getting IntelliSense, but I'm not getting the compiler reporting errors as I go through and make changes to this. Don't say. Yep, bar. So, this is a preview version. This is a little experimental that we're going into. I'm expecting these types of things to not be working. Uh, dot Kami, thanks so much for the resub, and that puts you into a red hat. Thanks so much. Appreciate you joining us. How to fix obsolete iLogger Factory? Well, hang on. I'm not sure I need to use iLogger Factory yet. I need to figure that out. We'll, we'll get there. Red hat is the best hat. Oh, yes. It is. Oh my. That's right. Um, Naruto to Sasuke. Thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate the follow. So I'm I'm at a little bit of a uh, at a little bit of a loggerhead here as to whether or not to use <laughs> loggerhead to use um, the logging bits, and I don't think I necessarily want to. No, no, uh, uh, we should, we should, come on, face it, we should, so I'm going to add the logging, I'm not going to define anything around it, um, extensions, logging, because at some point we're going to need to run diagnostics, and we're going to want to output that to Serilog or something so that we can read that. So, as a Red Hat Enterprise Linux fan, no bias. Ah, that's okay. You can just keep that Red Hat subscriber icon as long as you'd like Frackberg. <laughs> um, Alright, so that's written. I'm going to rename this to the application name to uh, the Fritzbot. I still don't have a concrete name for this thing. Or until six months. There you go. That'll do. Um, let's see here. Okay. Um, so I added the logging factory. So that should clean up some more of these errors that we have here. I'm down to two. All right. Pixelbot config could not be found. So this one, I options pixelbot config. Well, we've changed it. It's no longer pixelbot config that we're using. It's now uh, channel configuration. 
So let's change this so it comes out of that domain. Right? So let's copy this. And instead of data, I want no. Why don't you see? Why don't you see Pixelbot Core Domain? Because it's like right there, right? Channel configuration, Quiltony Pixelbot Core Domain. So, yeah. And then this should be channel. Okay, I'm getting worried because I'm, because I've now completely lost my uh, IntelliSense. Yep, down to one. Pixelbot config on line 45 there. So I should be able to change this to, there's channel configuration, good. And now I should have zero errors. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Now I have 24 errors. Did I? Did I put in it? Wait a sec. What? Who? Right, that's... It's looking for things that don't exist in there yet. That's fine. Yep, okay, no problem, I know what this is doing. This is trying to reach into things that don't exist. All right. You don't understand my idea, you're asking the Fritz bot. So what we're doing, right, this is going to be a, a very large distributed chat bot that's going to be able to manage many channels with many chatters all at the same time. This bit here is interacting with Google, the Google Sheets uh, service specifically, so that we can interact and pull back the, um, the, the amount of faux currency. Are we drinking green G Fuel today? No, it's just a green container. So you can kind of see through it. Um, it's actually Philadelphia Eagles Midnight Green. But today I'm drinking blue ice. There you go. Which is fantastic. Oh, thank you, Docker. Not right now. Um, all right. So one of the first things here, and I really wish I could see a little bit of this, config.google.sheet.id, that doesn't exist inside of our configuration over here. So where is it? Channel configuration. We need a Google segment here. Um, but that's actually part of the currency configuration. Right? If you're using a Google Sheet, then it would be configured here. Did that clear it up, Catafest? Let me know. I want to make sure that you're on that you're on board. You you know where I'm trying to get to here. This specific feature is just doing the data the the service interaction with Google Sheets to use Google Sheets as a um, as a no cost database solution. Um, I think I should put in here. Let's call this Google Current Google Sheet Storage. Nah, Google Sheet. Yeah, uh, currency configuration, and we'll call this just Google. And we'll by default make this null, so there isn't something here doing this thing. So now we need a class for that. Public class, Google Sheet. Hey, wow. All right. Blue. Blue what? What'd you do? What'd you do, Carrie? What's blue? All right. Um, I need some spaces in there. That My OCD is going to kill me if there's all jammed together like that. So the configuration that this is going to be looking for is the sheet ID coming off of that, all right? So we need a string for that. I'm using 
uh, I'm using the um, um, snippets here in Visual Studio Code to automatically complete that for me. So now, instead of this referencing config.google.sheet ID, I should be able to say, oh, look at that. That's not IntelliSense. That's some other, some other weirdo IntelliSense. But that should work now. And I should clear up a couple more of these errors here. Um, channel configuration. I didn't change anything there. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> Should. Should. <laughs> You're drinking blue? Carrie's drinking blue. G Fuel. There you go. Down to 23. All right. Moving on. I feel better about that. I do. I do feel better. Um, here. Look at this one. Google Sheet Proxy on line 72. The name Twitch does not exist in the current context. Yeah. That's, that's not where I was. I'm going to go to line 72. I feel bad because, well, I want to be able to click over here. Right, that's not actually navigating. 72. Twitch broadcast message on channel. No. This is, now needs to be chat service. So that should clean up that one. Is there anywhere else here? Oh, here we go. This one. Right? Ha! Somebody was asking about using the undocumented APIs last night, and our friend, uh, Lucky Number 7, chimed in and said <clears throat> that they do keep track of it. Um, this is a, an interesting place where we're doing that. We're getting the list of all the folks that are currently in a chat room, in the channel, and then... And then? We're adding currency for each one of those folks and then we log that entry that we gave everybody uh, currency so uh, when when the broadcasters feeling benevolent they'll go and hand this out to everybody um, so let's see I should be able to find in here twitch we're gonna need to change that yeah we're gonna need to change that um, but there's broadcast message on channel again. I'm going to change that to chat service. Yep, change that one to chat service. Hey, I'm typing here. Okay. I think that's all of them. Yeah. The only thing left here is to get the... Th this bit to get the chatters that are currently in the, the folks that are currently in the chat room so we're going to need to do a little bit of work to pipe that back here interesting because this is going to actually ask <clears throat> another actor to go get these things. What's going on there, chat room? I haven't heard from you in a little bit. Everybody doing good? Is, uh... It, it, did I miss it? Did... did Scott! Show up? Still alive? Alright. What happened there? Da, 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 da. Okay. <clears throat> Didi's on a sugar coma. Oh, see, that's why you need G Fuel, Didi. Okay. Oh my gosh, I just come in a little bit closer here, chat room. I just thought of we need to give Didi G Fuel this week at build. That's got to be a thing. G Fuel Dusted Toast. Now, the Simeon, you sound like Ellie Face. That's something Ellie Face would do. Get her a starter kit. Yeah. What's G Fuel? Oh my gosh, Dee Dee, it's gonna change your life. 
G Fuel energy formula. Now I'm going to sound like I'm selling this. I am not sponsored by G Fuel. G Fuel did not pay for this placement. I'm a fan. Um, so it's a it's an energy drink, no sugar, 25 calories, and it's got and one scoop of this mixed with uh, it's about 16 ounces of water. Um, this one is strawberry shortcake. Um, tastes amazing, and it has as much caffeine as coffee. Because there's no sugar in it, you don't crash, and it's got L-Dopa in it, which means you feel happy. G Fuel, you can get it at gfuel.com. You can get all kinds of shaker cups like this one. Or that one they gave out at TwitchCon. Or maybe you're like the Doc. There you go, there's the Doc. So I've got a handful of them. They're terrific. It's amazing. The little scoop does bother me. You want some now? I'll help you out with that. Oh, yes. Um, not to fill that little scoop. Yes. Something healthy. It, it, it's... Yeah. Um, coffee's not healthy either. Just saying. All right, let's see. How did we do here with that rebuild? Now that we made those changes. Down to 19. I'm feeling better about that already. Models does not exist. All of these models references does not exist. Let's go find... Where is it referencing models? Ah! Number of pixels to add. Currency.name. So the name of our currency. Well, you know what? Let's, uh... Let's put a little accessor here so we can get through and, and spit out that currency name a little bit easier. Um, and this shouldn't be static. That's way wrong. Oop, wrong one. My bad. Sometimes I confuse my, uh, my control key and my option key here for the Mac. This should be like that. So now I should have string, and let's call this currency name. We'll put a get on this, and it's going to return, uh, config currency name. Yeah, I've lost IntelliSense. It's not here. It's misbehaving. Down to 19. We were at 7. So it, it started looking at the rest of the file once it got b through the references. And, uh, yeah. So now these ones where it's models.currency.name I can just shorten this to currency name because that makes things a little bit better. All right, let's go find where else is it models. Yep. All right. Where else? Find it. No, I don't want currency name. It's models I was looking for. It's only a model. There we go. All right, so we'll get rid of that. Rid of this. Right, and now do that. Yep, get rid of this one. Okay. No. There's, I hope that's the last one. Save that, let's see if it rebuilds and we clear out a little bit more. 19 errors, I thought we were down to 17. 14, all right, feeling good. Feeling good. The operator less than cannot be applied. What's this one? Line 94. That feels weird. Here. This row dot count less than two. Oh, you know what's going on here? Um, that's an I list. We're missing a reference to... Yes, the shoutouts are working for everybody. All right, take care, Catafest. Thanks so much for joining us. Just caught the code party thing. You'll be in town. Oh, yes, we will have not just in-person viewing. We'll have in-person guests. Gosh, Clark I.O., make sure you stop by. Um, Dee Dee, we need to make sure we get Brian Clark in to join us for the code party. And shoutouts are working for everybody. Yeah, Nick Larson. Nick Larson's another a new member of the Live Coders team. Make sure you check him out. 
Am I getting some glyphs popping up here? Some artifacts coming through? I think we're missing a reference to... Yeah, system link extensions. Expressions? Maybe that's it. And that should help with at least that... What I thought was a method group. Come on. You can... Nope. Nope. This one right here on line 95. Yeah, it's right there. It thinks... Hey, listen! Yes? What's up, Hugo? You don't think iList has the count properly. Only the list implementation does. I believe you if it wasn't already working inside of the other project. Now, you know what? That might actually be a .NET Core versus .NET Standard thing. That I would believe. That I would absolutely believe. So we're, we were at 14. Let's see if we can get that to 13. There we go. So that's fixed. All right. Moving on. Channel configuration does not contain a definition for Twitch. I thought I already removed all of the Twitch. Oh, this bit right here. Okay. Um, let's do this. No, I'm going to leave that. I want to let that break for a little bit. Channel configuration does not contain a definition for Google on line 60 here. All right. So here's where we need the client ID and the client secret. These are the things we need in order to get in to that Google sheet. So let's uh, let's create those properties. Not partial. There we go. Um, client ID. Uh, no. String client secret. Secret. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. So now we should be able to say config dot currency. Put the same deal here. Save. And hopefully we get down to 11 errors now. Don't chat at all in stream. What? Asking about dropping a distraction is a distraction and not dropping it is like my kids saying, I know something you don't to each other. <laughs> Uh, oh no, we're not going to squirrel the entire. Squirrel all the chats. <laughs> Unblocked a handful of projects now. Very cool. Down to 11. All right. Feeling feeling good. Uh, cannot use ref local username on line 87. Oh yeah. Watch me. Um, <laughs> equals username. Username is... Viewer dot username dot two lower variant dot trim. Well, wait a sec. That doesn't cannot use ref local username inside an anonymous method lambda expression or query expression. What? That feels broken. Um, can I implicitly convert type system read only span car to da, 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 Google Sheet Proxy 8940 here? Wait a second. Hold the phone. Where is it finding a read only span? Are you telling me that this is coming out as a read-only span? No. No. All right. Get chat room viewers. Um, instead of that, I'm going to make this a new string. 
So it's a string array, which means that viewers is a collection of strings, which means viewers a string, which means viewer username. Username isn't a thing. So I'm just going to change this to viewer and comment that out for right now. That should clear up some of these here. So we should get down a little bit further. There we go. Five to go now. And there's a couple places where it's referencing the APIs still. Can I convert from string array to string on line 107? Where do you see string array? Acting user is a string. Username, username is not a string array. Oh, no. Equals viewer. My bad. Line 87. Ah, that, I don't have that working here. Line 87, two string trim equals username, not double equals. No, that's, I'm good with that. Um... I could do, I think I see what you're saying there. I could do equals here, right? Bring that in and then make it string comparison, right? Invariant culture, ignore case. And then I'm not, I'm not changing, um, I'm not actually changing the object there at all. That does, it ends up being, yeah. There are a couple of those. You're right. With the double equals, we could probably clear up. All right, there's another one. Right. Two string. We could change this to... Um, hey. I need another one. Thank you all. String comparison, invariant culture, ignore case. So, there's more of those. We can find them and clean them up. But I'm down to one. Three errors. Okay. So, it's three places where it's referencing the APIs. Google Sheet Proxy 170. Here we go. Google APIs Sheets V4 Data Value Range. Uh, what? Oh, look at that. Ooh. You understand nothing, but you enjoy the communal coding. Oh, Space Cat. Eh, we'll, we'll get to, to explaining a little bit easier here in a second. Um, what's happening here, what's being confused, and this is a good one. Um, the Google APIs here... It's, it's confusing things. So for those of you who are, who are not developers, there's a concept, you, you see this in many different programming languages, um, but in Java, in C Sharp, you have this concept called a namespace. And a namespace is kind of like a series of folders on disk where you list hierarchically and you separate with periods the names of the different namespaces that things are nested in. It's a way to organize your code so that you can find it and isolate different parts appropriately. Google, when they created their API, they placed all the stuff for interacting with their Sheets service inside of a namespace called google.apis.sheets. What the compiler is telling me down here is that it sees google.apis and it thinks, oh, I know what Google is. It's pixelbot.google, the namespace that I'm currently living in. You're referencing that, aren't you, Jeff? No, no, I'm not. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to alias. Uh, I'm going to alias this part of the namespace. So that it's easier for us to find these things. Actually, I could grab the whole namespace there, couldn't I? That was down on 170. Da, 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 da. 
Um, I could grab this entire... No, you know what? Let's grab this bit. Uh, I wanted to go... Take, take, take me home. Go. I'm trying to hit... I'm trying to hit command uh, home and have it go to the top. And it's not. Uh, so let's call this Sheets. For those of you in Pittsburgh. See, see what I, I... I did a thing. Anyways. Um, go dip back down here to 170. Da, 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 da. Let me know when you get the Sheets reference. Sad trombone. Um, oh, shoot. I'm not on that. How am I not on that thing? Yes, there you go. You could also alias the Google namespace into something like G Sheets. Yes, absolutely. So this is, yeah, namespace confusion. Draco asking, what Mac model am I on? I'm on a uh, MacBook Air, 13 inch. Um, da -da -da -da. I need to go down here to line 186. It's probably a slightly different here. Oh, now see, it's on a different namespace. Google APIs services. Um, isn't there a thing that'll say split vertically? Because if I click that, it's going to split it horizontally, and that feels bad. Don't do that. I want to split vertically. View. Where is it? Split vertically. Yep, there we go. Um, split up. Okay. Get rid of that. I'm going to go up here. So I think I could just take Google APIs and I could probably put them into their own deal here. Let's do this. Let's do that. Get rid of the, the sheets gag. Um, so then we'll turn this into APIs dot sheets. So that should work again. And then here I can turn this into APIs. I could make it like G APIs or something, but this works. Close that. And reopen this deal. Uh, NSO 1995, you graduate tonight. We gotta celebrate that. Congratulations. Much hype in the channel. Absolutely. Hope it, hope it doesn't rain too bad. Yeah, no, no. All the best to you and your career, and congratulations. Making it this far in your schooling, that is always something to celebrate. Uh, what are you graduating from? Uh, university? High school? Um, trade school? Something like that? Let us know. University, terrific. All the best to you. And I think that's the last. There we go, build succeeded. All right, so we've converted so that our interactions with, with Google that were originally configured to work single-threaded over inside of the original Pixelbot now are sitting over here and it compiles. Doesn't mean it's right, but it compiles. We still need to call into this so that we can we can instantiate the object directly and have it do things, right? So next steps, we need to reference the Pixelbot Google project inside of our orchestrator. And then hook it up so that when we have Google Sheets configured for a storage option, we actually use it. And then do a little bit of testing here. Hey, the Michael Jolly, thank you very much for gifting that sub. Uh, very cool. Um, and you start your job as a software engineer on the 24th. Well done, NSO 1995. Well done. Big congrats to you. And enjoy that sub. We'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code, to Vets Who Code this, this quarter. All cheers, all subs will be donated to them. 
Uh, why am I using Visual Studio Code instead of Visual Studio for a C-sharp solution? Asks, is that ZGLRX? Let me know how to pronounce that. Um, I'd like to buy a vowel. Um, so, I'm actually working on a Mac today. So, I'm using Visual Studio Code to show how cool it is to use Visual Studio Code with your .NET projects. So, um, yeah, very generous, Michael Jolly. Thank you very much. That is awesome. Yes. All right, let's get this thing referenced. Let's get it included over here inside of the orchestrator project. So we can add that reference to the orchestrator project. If I go up one and go down into the, that project is pixel bot orchestrator. Uh, yep, there we go. So I can say it was .NET add, and it will allow me to add a reference to another project here. So I'm gonna say .NET add reference, and we're going to reference, go up one, and then down into Pixelbot, Google, and it is that one. And it should add that, add that reference into the definition of the orchestrator project. Boom, done, and it's going to recompile over here inside of my running unit tests. Come on, unit tests. Go, 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 go. Come on. I want to see it run. You can do it. Give me it's it's kind of hiding behind me here behind the chair. I don't have I don't have a chair scene like like Brian Clark does, like Clark IO. Uh, there it goes. Test successful. Fantastic. I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty pretty positive about where we're going at this point but I know without actually testing this and, and getting it working uh, we're not there yet right we just have it compiling the actual logic of it we're not there with um, Jesus Botella asks how am I streaming the Mac screen using a PC <laughs> <laughs> that's a secret no no I'll tell you um, I have a little I use a video capture card. Um, I go to Elgato. Elgato, they make cool things like the HD60, the Stream Deck, Stream Deck, and Boat Snacks. Boat Snacks, now brought to you by, no. Um, that's a thing on Fierce Kitten's channel. If you watch Fierce Kittens, you know about Boat Snack. Um, it, make sure you check out Fierce Kittens. People know me. Like like Fierce Kittens does. Um, so what I've done is I've output, I have the video output from my uh, laptop uh, going through that capture card and into my PC. I could also, and I, I was trying to use VNC to just remote in and control it directly, but there's a little bit of lag. It's, it's not crisp. So I didn't want to use that directly, and, and it it might be a good solution for you if that's a way you want to go, but I've got the hardware. Let's just connect it up and make it happen. How long until Jeff starts wearing a jacket with the brands and products NASCAR style? Let me tell you something, Hugo. Let me tell you. Uh, so these folks don't pay me. Elgato, well, Elgato sent us a bunch of different um, stream decks, and we sent a bunch of them out to folks as well. Um, let me tell you something there, Hugo. Um, sooner than you think. <laughs> um... I, I yes, I've used four stream decks. Elgato is pretty good. Now that's not a cat in the bag. Overwatch hat, yeah, I watch Overwatch a lot, a lot, and I play it too. He's already talked about a Twitch tattoo, so maybe jackets, hats will be required. Um, so I've I've been talking about doing a Twitch tattoo since I got partner. Um, 
that's definitely th something that I've got to do. Was searching for something like that for your setup, you saw NDI. NDI has a little bit of network lag as well. So you, NDI is a network a network video transmission protocol. If you've seen, uh, it's made by a, a company called New Tech, uh, N E W T E K. Um, they make things like the TriCaster. You you may have seen that prof more professional podcasters use, uh, stream studios use. Folks like Leo Laporte and his This Week in Tech studio they use the TriCaster extensively. Um, but you can use NDI with things like Skype, and their uh, NDI tools that you can download to transmit video across the network, receive it somewhere else. And there's a plugin for OBS that will receive NDI transmissions and you can put it into your layout. And that's how we do some of the video composition work that we do in, at Channel 9 when you see me broadcast from Microsoft. There is the purple beard thing. Oh yes, I know. Very enthusiastic promoter of products I use personally and provide. I do. Everything, I'm I want to make sure that, that the things that I use, that I enjoy, um, that I share with you. So if you want to use them, you can find them and get access to them. And also to show a, love, a little bit of love back to those organizations. Um, I am not sponsored by Elgato. I am not sponsored by G Fuel, but I love the hell out of both of their products. <sighs> okay, that might have been a little much. Um... Still reeling from the front page tattoo? Who's got a front page tattoo? <laughs> oh, and a MySpace tattoo. <laughs> uh, Twitch is going to be around for a while. Brady does use G Fuel as well. He does. One for every framework. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay, so this is built. It's doing its thing, and we have it now available to the orchestrator. The orchestrator has the, where's the command? It, well, it doesn't have these commands down here, but it will need to have access when the Google Sheets are configured as what it should be using. So if Google Sheet configuration is not null, we're using Google Sheets. But I think I also, because there's different sheet layouts that I'm currently supporting, I have two different sheet layouts. I think I need to give you the ability to switch between them as well hey mags wouldn't it be cool to see some visual studio for mac did that yesterday like 14 hours ago we were using visual studio for mac we'll bounce back and forth between the two um the enron tattoo is aging well yeah a microsoft guy in the 90s got an ole2 tattoo zoom tattoos yeah that's that's bad um, imagine the uh, TBD gamer. That's what laptop stickers are for. So, um, let's see, I've got this laptop sticker. I can put that right there. There she is again. The potato cat. Don't look at me like that. Stop it. Fine. Um, no, the the twitch tattoo I think is definitely a thing. Uh, you try Elgato is good, but it seems way too professional for your stream level right now. Oh, not a problem. I, um, VNC, I think, is a great way to, to get started, to get into it. Um, a, a, a Windows 2000 tattoo would be just insane. That'd be a little crazy. That's like what, getting a I Survived Y2K tattoo. Okay. Uh, give your stream deck a custom Twitch color themed paint job. I, I haven't seen how that turned out. I saw you were painting it, Robert Tables, but I didn't see the final product. A Windows Me tattoo. You saw me break out the Windows Me when I was at Channel 9 last time. And that was a lot of fun. Um, I think I need to put that type. You'll drop a pic in Discord? Cool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you could put a link to the image here in the... No, never. Okay. Um, he did have an ME box in the product paver stones for the Visual Studio keynote. Yes. Oh, that was hysterical. Um, he actually went over to the Microsoft archives where they have 
every box product. Um, and he checked out a couple of them. And you see them placed strategically as Easter eggs throughout that video. And uh, yeah, yeah, he poked some fun at Windows ME. There, some folks weren't too happy with that, but they got the joke. Um, the fact that he brought a copy of Visual Studio 97 for Julia at the opening was hysterical because uh, Julia Lucen, the vice president in charge of DevDiv at Microsoft, she's actually been involved in every Visual Studio version. Th and that's pretty cool. Um, really, uh, brilliant woman, much respect to her. Um, and uh, to know that all of the great developer tools that, that we expect from Microsoft uh, she's been responsible for is a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment. You know, much respect to her and her career. Uh, I'm very proud to work with her, and uh, we've done some cool things together. Yep, that memory lane. Um, oh yeah. So let's uh, let's figure out how should we initialize, right? If if there is no Google Sheet configuration, then if there is a Google Sheet configuration, then we should start get access to that so that we can do our current... That's how we're going to pass around our currency. Uh, our, our... Think, Jeff, think, think, think. Our currency repository. Right. Okay. So... I feel like that should be late bound. Late bound. That's a thing. That's a thing. So let's call this um, repository type. Right? So let me explain light, late bound versus early bound. Right? Do I have that? Do I have those terms right, uh, DD? Late bound, early bound? Um, you have, when, when you reference these types directly, like here, Google Sheet Currency Configuration. You reference that directly, and it's being included, and, and the compiler sees it, and it's referencing it. That is early bound. You're defining the type, and you're accessing it directly. The compiler knows what you're referencing, and can do some type checking to ensure that you're using it correctly. Late bound is when you pass in the type of the object that you're, you want to use as a string at some point, and eventually you tell the compiler, oh, by the way, I need a type. You don't know what the type is, but here it is in a string. Go find it, create it, and instantiate it. So th that's the difference between these two different ways that you can interact with types in .NET. You can do stuff similarly in other programming languages. But here in C Sharp, we're going to pass it in. We're going to use an object called the activator to create it. So the type that we're going to be starting here is coming out of pixelbot.google. I can actually cheat a little bit here and just call this, uh, I can just put in the entire namespace, pixelbot, Google, and then uh, ooh, ooh, Google Sheet Proxy. And we'll, uh, we'll set that up a little bit cleaner when we instantiate it because we actually need to go into the actor for the channel. So inside the channel, and I think I want to stick the, the repository here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have the channel configuration, the bot configuration. We're going to instantiate and place that currency configuration, have it hang off of the channel because the currency configuration for the channel is unique for each channel because it, they're going to configure it. So I think that's what I want to do here. So let's go I currency repository. Yeah. And we'll call this currency repository. All right, um, so we have that here. So we need to we need to create it appropriately, stash it there. So then, 
Oh, wait a sec. No, we're in the channel. And we hook up to these different things, these different actors that we're going to pass things into. Oh, yes. All right. I think I know what we're going to do here. I think I know what we're going to do. We're going to do a little bit of reverse, uh, uh, inverse dependency handling here, I think. I think that's what it's called. So, um, round pre-start, start the Twitch connection, and it sets up these. But we have the configuration here. Um, I'm going to put a method here. I'm going to put a call out to configure currency repository. And it shouldn't know what this is, so I should be able to control dot. See, that doesn't work. It doesn't know what that thing is. And now I feel shame. Just normal shame, not this kind of shame. Shame. Yeah, not that kind of shame. Um, and, and that girl going to get a whooping this week, isn't she? Referring to Game of Thrones and uh, Cersei Lannister. She's ripe for a whooping. It's it's coming. Um, don't mess with that Arya Stark. Don't mess with my girl Arya Stark. She's going to whoop you. No spoilers. No spoilers at all. But that girl Cersei going to get a whooping. It's coming. The whooping is coming. Not winter is coming. The whooping is coming. Uh, Alright, so we need to configure the currency repository. The currency repository is going to be created based on whether or not we actually have currency enabled. So let's do that first. Uh, if not, config... Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. I'm going to have to do this on my own. If it is not enabled, I think that's how it, uh, not equals, return, do nothing, go away, shoot. Otherwise, um, we need to check to see, the only configuration we have is the Google repository, so we need to put a little bit of a guard clause here. If not, config currency Google. If, um, no, wrong button. If that does not equal null, then we need to go and create it. Which is going to be then um, currency repository equals, here we go, activator. Oh, that's not going to give me the... Oh, yeah. Um, activators in system.reflection. Oh, stop it! System reflection. Oh man. Yeah. Way to go. Uh, C sharp plugin. Way to go. Um, let's stick it up here. System dot. Yeah. <coughs> She's on the list. Uh, the whooping is coming. Oh, yeah. Go get a switch. <laughs> uh, have you missed much? Hey, Stelzy. No, you haven't missed much yet. Uh, the whooping is coming. Um, down here in the pixel bot. Right? I should be able to cheat and grab a little bit of that activator stuff. Using system. their system reflection. I want to make sure I grab... The activator appropriate, the activator appropriately. So I'm gonna cheat just a little bit here. Grab that syntax and head back over to the channel actor. So my channel actor, <coughs> I'm gonna store a reference to the currency repository appropriately that we're gonna be using here. So here, let's paste that in. <clears throat> the sheet type yeah the sheet type is the um, it's going to be coming out of config currency 
Google. Uh, what did I call it? Repository type. Now, I can't just load the repository type there, actually. I need to put it together as a, as a complete .NET type name. So I should have made that sheet type. I should have thought that through. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, didn't. Um, sheet type. If I paste that there. <coughs> but the repository type is actually because I'm coming out of this Google object. I need to provide the... Uh, I've got the full namespace, fully qualified. I've got the full namespace there, but I need to put the assembly name up front. Which is uh, pixelbot.google with a comma and then the name of the namespace. That should be better. The other arguments that are being passed in here to the create instance, I wish I could show you, but it's not going to give me the IntelliSense goodies that come along with that. Uh, Lowest you've seen the sentiment widget? No! Don't do that. Don't break it. Um, so... What does this need to be passed in to get started? It needs the channel configuration and then the logger factory. Well, I could pass this in directly because I have the channel configuration, right? I don't need to pass the options bit around. And then the logger factory, I said, and then the logger factory, um, we should be able to grab the logger factory here from, uh, from Akka and pass that along. So I'm going to pass in config because that's, right, that is a channel configuration. Good. The logger factory, where did it stick the logger factory? Because I th thought, right, we should be able to grab the, we should be able to grab Right. Oh no. I'm not going to be able to explore that. The sentiment widget was at 0 0.9. Oh no. Oh no. I may need to go to the docks. How do we get... How do we get from Akka... Go in here. Um, oh, we are just about out of time here. Um, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. Uh, I, I want to get the logger factory. They call it a logging adapter. Logging get logger context. Not sure I like that. And isn't there a way to get the logger for a logger factory? I'm going to save that for next time. But for now, I'm going to replace this with no. And put a big old to do here. Need to grab the Akka logger factory and pass in as the third argument. Fantastic. And if I head back over to here, yep, we should see that build properly. While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to take a quick look at git status. Let's add pixelbot.google. Still didn't build properly. Typer namespace, iCurrency repository could not be found. Oh, let's fix that real quick. That's in, um, I can copy this line. And it's in data. Right, we should see that build properly. Okay. Do it. Do it. It started building. Nope. Can I cast from core domain channel configuration to typer namespace? I sheet proxy could not be found. What? In channel actor CS. Are you kidding? Ah, that right there. No. This needs to be as iCurrency repository. 
that should fix that. Aliasing my dependency to MSG. Um, we can we can fix that later. That's easy. Da, da, da. All right, so now I've still got argument two. Can I convert from core domain channel configuration to string on 127? Uh, what? Line 127, argument 2, cannot convert from channel configuration to string. On line 127, channel configuration, uh, that is a string. That doesn't make sense to me. That really doesn't make sense to me. But that should work. Uh, or not. Channel actor line 27. Channel actor line 127 is, well, it's down here. Oh, this. Well, it's an object that I'm passing in. I'm going to comment this out for right now, just so I can get it to, to check in. Um, adding Google uh, Sheets interactions. Okay, and I will push, and we're feeling good. All right. So that's where we are. We converted our existing our existing Google Sheets interactions here so that now we can start to really test that and make sure that it works. We're almost there. There's a little bit on the creation of that Google Sheet proxy so that it's running as a currency repository inside of that channel actor. And then we'll pass that along down the actor structures so that it can be interacted with and pass information back appropriately to um, from those events to the Google Sheet proxy in the storage mechanism, right? In the storage repository. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. This has been really cool today. I will not be live on Sunday during my normal time because we're hosting a code party that night live from the Tap House at Microsoft Build. There'll be trivia. There'll be prizes. We might even see Brian Clark stop by. What's the tool on the right screen? What tool? This is Tmux that you see in front of us. So I'm going to set up for the raid. And we're going to raid our friend R. Dallas today. That's Steve Smith. He's another one of the live coders. Subscribers, grab that first line of text there with the raid indicators with the bot. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Grab the second line of text. Copy that off into your clipboard and get ready. When we get over to Steve's channel, we're going to welcome him. We're going to say hello by dropping all that text into his chat room and take over his chat. All right. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. I hope to see you on Sunday live from Microsoft Build. I have a very rich schedule next week of broadcasts from Build. We're going to have a complete schedule on the wall here below me. Make sure you click that follow button so you're notified every time that we go live. We've got all kinds of great guests joining us. I hope to see you then. Until then, take care. I hope you have a good weekend, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Have a good one. Say hi to Steve for me.